Today is all about laptops, and I got a couple sitting here, but I kind of want to go over extending battery life, overall life of your laptop, and then just getting a better experience all around, because I've had a really, really nice laptop that I was not very satisfied with because of low battery life, and sometimes it got loud, sometimes when I was just doing regular work. So it was more about understanding power management and getting that laptop to a state I want. Now I'm gonna be going over both Windows and Linux in this video, just to kind of showcase the big differences in power management and the approaches, and then how to tweak them. Let's first tackle the thermal portion of this video, which means, hey, uh, if your laptop's running hotter, it's using more power because it needs to cool that down. And the hotter it runs, the more power it's gonna suck and the shorter battery life. Also, it will eventually reduce the lifespan if running at a really high thermals. Anything over 80 Celsius, in my opinion, is a bit too hot. So first thing, grab a cheap, like pad like this, you don't have to get some name brand. Uh, I, I'll put like a link down there for like a $30 one, but get whatever one you like. Uh, I wouldn't spend a bunch of money. Just make sure it has a nice little grate. It's breathable for both front and back. Uh, and typically they'll have like exhaust and intake ports and, and other fans, but any of these work, just grab whichever one suits you best. Now, moving on from that, I would say uh, on this laptop and pretty much any standard laptop where you have a pretty accessible back, I would redo the thermal paste. I know that sounds like a big ask, and if you're not comfortable, definitely skip this part. But I will say, on this stock Clevo laptop made by K-Focus, here's the picture uh, I saw of it, and the thermal compound was uh, put on there quite heavy, and that's pretty standard on every single laptop. Asus, HP, Dell, all of them do it. They put those thermal compounds on there, so remove the back, put up um, the thermal, and, and get some good thermal compound, put that on there, or the thermal paste, redo that, uh, just put a drop. Uh, you know, less is more in a lot of cases for thermal uh, paste, and there's a lot of good YouTube videos if you're unsure on how to do it. Just don't put excessive amounts on like they do on most of these uh, stock laptops. Now, next up, uh, I already showed this one, but on this guy, these little Chromebooks, they last like 10 hours. Uh, Apple also has very, very long lasting batteries, and a lot of this deals with power management beside them. So let's get on the desktop and I want to show how to make this big honking laptop that typically only lasts like an hour or two because it has a 2080 Super, 64 gigs, eight cores, 16 threads. I mean, it's pretty much a desktop in a laptop form factor for this guy, where this thing is just considerably less in every single way. It's an APU, there is no external graphics, and the entire components of it typically last a good 10 hours, but the actual CPU in here is pretty underwhelming. And it's very easy to take that underwhelming components and basically make this laptop emulate this one. Because if I'm just browsing the web, maybe checking YouTube, or maybe I'm just writing out an article for my website, I will literally just write that out and I don't need all that big stuff. And if this is the big laptop with me, I need to down clock that so I'll get 10 hours of battery life. Yes, these big laptops, you can strip out enough to where you, you will get hours and hours and hours of longevity, just like you would with like a Chromebook or a lesser laptop. So Windows, I will address first because that's what most people use. I typically just do start run powercfg.cpl. This is the old version of the power state and I like it the best. Typically, I always adjust the minimum and maximum processor state. On battery, I always make minimum 5% and then on maximum power state, depending on the laptop, like this eight core 16 thread beast I have, I would take that and put the maximum power state at like 25%. So it's using about a fourth of that because I only really need it to use two cores, four threads for basic web browsing and just general use where I don't see really any slowdown, but I get a massive increased battery life. So adjusting the min and max processor states using just the built-in power management in Windows is fantastic. You can't do this through modern Windows systems through the config, but that powercfg.cpl is still there. So you can definitely do it on modern Windows systems. It's just a little bit hidden. 
And if you want a script to do this, I, I love auto hotkey for Windows systems because you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. On my website here, I just have kind of an entire script. Really, the only thing you need to do is just copy it, uh, put it in an AHK script, and then adjust your min and max values here. Uh, typically, this is just going to adjust your maximum capabilities. So DC power basically means uh, your, your battery, and then AC power is going to be the wall. So you'd probably adjust AC power to be... 100. Uh, in, in, if your laptop's a little bit too noisy when it's plugged in and you want to bring it down, you might switch it to like 75. But for DC power on this b beefy one, I'd probably leave this at 25 so it does not use a massive amount of power and I really get a lot more battery life. Now on Linux, this could span out to so much. I'm just going to touch on what I like to do for my systems because this is a big change for how much power you're sucking. Linux gives you all the options in the world, but they can be so overwhelming. And I don't really think very many people do power management right on Linux. So I'm just going to show you the tools I use. The first bit is using like CPU power to adjust the frequency, much like we did in Windows. You can do the same thing in Linux. I usually just do CPU power. I install that utility and just do a frequency set. So I would usually just copy this, come on over here, sudo, type that in and install these things. From here, you could easily just do this to do a frequency set of a minimum power of 800 megahertz and a maximum power of 1.2. And you might be thinking, well, okay, my laptop's actually spikes up to five gigahertz. Like this one over here, the beast I mentioned, it goes all the way up to 5.1. And if I don't set anything in here, it gets kind of ridiculous. So the first thing I usually do is using those tools from earlier, I like to see what my CPU is capable of. So I'll usually do a, a CPU freak and then do an info. This just kind of gives me a readout of what's happening on my actual system. So right here, uh, you can see this is an AMD system. Intel systems typically only have power save and performance uh, because they have P states that just adjust a bit differently but it will usually always be between 2.2 gigahertz and 3.7. Now let's say I was really power conscious. Let's say I was running a desktop from here. I could actually adjust this down, uh, but it just depends on what the hardware limits are. The hardware limits of this particular CPU is it never wants to go below 2.2 and it never wants to go above 4.65. So when I would set this over on this screen, it would be 2.2 for the D and then obviously I probably wouldn't want to go all the way to 4.6 if it was a laptop. I would probably bring that down to like 3.0 or something like that. So it would say on the lower end of what the capabilities of that CPU. Obviously I'm going to take a little performance hit if I'm doing like heavy gaming or something that's real CPU intensive. But for the most part, for average day use, it would be totally okay. And then I could set it to uh, unlock basically when I go do those CPU intensive tasks. And then there's other things uh, when it comes to Intel based CPUs, like this big monster over here is an Intel. I usually take off and put no turbo on in like a startup script. So it never goes into turbo mode and, you know, throttles up even past that obviously sucks more battery. And then if I'm really wanting to throttle things down, you can actually turn off individual cores. So if you have, let's say 16 cores, like the Intel system over here, you could actually make a script right here and say, hey, disable any cores above four threads. So I'd only have two cores, four threads running out of the possible eight cores. 16 threads. So I could actually have a savings of 75% by shutting off three quarters of my CPU in this laptop. And you can actually see the wattage difference that's happening. And you might be thinking, how in the world do you see what power wattage? Now, obviously you could do an external reader and plug that into your power or Linux has a cool tool called PowerTop. So we're just going to install PowerTop here and just do pseudo PowerTop and what this is going to do, it's going to pull in everything happening and going, okay, your system is currently using 
so many watts or it's discharging so many watts. Right here is a desktop PC, so it doesn't actually read the discharge amount, but on laptops, it will show how many watts are discharging in the upper corner above right where summary is. And you can start to make these adjustments and see the wattage different that is actually happening, what's using most of your battery life, what's not. And then you can kind of tune these as you see fit. So I kind of give you a lot of examples in Linux down here that you can try. You can limit specific tasks, like if you come over to your power top and you're looking at like polybar up here and you're like wait polybar is not being used or something like that and you want to limit that process down you could actually install another package called cpu limit and limit hey and say hey this only can take so much of the processor in time and then finally the last tool for you linux users out there is mv control this right here is kind of amazing I love this project because it basically works on anything. It's a Python script. You can just do a pip install, MV control, and MV control will rebuild, I think it's the MK init uh, or the, basically the init system as Linux is coming in and it will disable the other GPU. So on the 20 super on the big laptop I have, I'll use MV control and then just set it to integrated and that will extend my battery life usually by a good bit because that internal GPU, that 2080 Super on low power usually still sucks about 10 watts. And this will basically remove those 10 watts and shut it completely down using MV control. Or let's say you're doing a lot of high-end work and you don't want to have to choose between, you know, Intel or the Nvidia and you just want to run that 2080 Super because you have reliable power input, switch it over to Nvidia. If you're doing some gaming and you got a good power source. Now there's even more power management you can do in Linux. I just wanted to start to dive in there and kind of show you the tool set, mainly because Chromebooks have amazing battery life and Chrome OS is Linux underneath all that. And if they're able to do that in Chrome OS, you can do it in just regular stock Linux. And that's kind of what I wanted to really dive in and better understand these things because so many distributions just don't give a flying F about any of the power management and most Linux all around doesn't even bother with power management. There's so much more that can be done in this space and so many tools that still need to be written and flushed out uh, that is not made by Google. And that's the beauty of all these tools. You can use them. You can build your own using bash scripts. That's what I usually do for my laptops is I have a specified, you know, minimum one because most times when I'm pulling on a laptop, I'm mobile. So I automatically strip all this down just using a basic script. Check out the website, christitis.com. As over there on uh, christitis.com, I put all of these cheat sheets and copy paste commands. And I'll expand this article as more comes available for laptop power management. But just know, not all is lost. You have a lot of options in Linux. And even in Windows users, make sure you remember that legacy power panel because Windows does a decent job of power management just out of the gate, but if you want a little more control, that's how you get it. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one.